I got really down the rabbit hole. This guy, Robert O'Neill, he was a uh, SEAL Team 6 dude. He was the one that shot Osama bin Laden. They were in the car speculating. It was like some of the top operatives. And they're like, hey guys, I think it's Osama bin Laden. Another Navy SEAL is like, oh yeah, I think it's Osama too. And the guy driving the truck is like, if it's Osama bin Laden, I'ma suck yo dick. Fast forward three weeks and I'm standing over Osama bin Laden's body and I look over at him. I'm like, well, now is as good of a time as any. One dude that cleared the room, he comes in. Cause when you're clearing the room, it's the most dangerous job in the Navy SEALs. Cause like come in and you don't know where people yeah, are. Go going, dude. I, I, I really like, I bought like three different clear, You clear that room. <laughs> so he like cleared the room and, they're just and he just searching. like, there were, I guess there were more Robert people there. Because comes, and Osama's behind his wife and he like, just fucked him. Just do, do, do. three to the face, explodes his whole head. Welcome to the Smart Nonsense Podcast, where we talk about smart and nonsense. Stutterless intro, some would say. We're back at it again. Redemption. Uh, do you still dude, listen to that, by the way? Call her daddy, back at it do again. Do you still listen to Tosh.0, Web Redemptions? <laughs> I've been watching his <laughs> podcast, no. talk about podcasts. I really like it. Because, well, I don't know if you've seen an episode, but it's like... He's a very funny guy. Dude, he'll talk to anyone, and he's kind of got this, like, alpha, beta energy that I, I can't pin. He, like, embraces, like, kind of gay stuff, but he's also hard as fuck, and it's kind of cool. Uh, but I just like that he interviews everybody in his life. Like, he's not going after celebrities at all. He's just like, here's my fucking gardener uh, or my stylist. Well, you sent me a you sent me a uh, photo from his podcast where he was sitting across from his dog, <laughs> yeah, or somebody's dog. That was his outro. Wait, what was he saying? He's just talking to his dog, and his dog's just he's got like <laughs> multicam on a dog, and it's just it was funny. Um, so yeah, what what I think about, is funny about him in terms of what you're saying. I in think in terms of what I'm saying, he's always he's kind of playing this uh, character. That is who you're talking about, who's like kind of gay, but kind of hard. But then like you kind of see him, he'll like break character and like kind of like look down and smile at himself mm -hmm. very often because he knows it's just kind of ridiculous. Ah. I don't know. Uh, I miss Tosh Pino. Those, yeah. those were the good old well, days. This is, this is good too. It's, it's good to see a little innovation <laughs> in the podcast sphere. Just talking to buddies. Um, we've had hey, a dark dude. morning though. I don't mean to bring hey, light to dude. the darkness. That's my bad. Uh, heart of darkness over here. Friday morning. Usually my Fridays are fantastic. But this Friday morning, because I got direct reports now, mm. and they report things to uh. me. And sometimes you don't like the contents of the report you set out right. to get. Uh, That's what we're dealing with. We could start with that. We could start with the DM I just got, which was freaking yeah. weird. Well, yeah, let's start with the DM, dude. That's a little positive well, Probably start that's with that, negative, right? Actually. I thought it was positive. Uh, positive, negative. Uh, so I, because right before a podcast, I piss and boot. That means I go pee and then I boot up piss for the pod. Boots. And when I go piss and boots, and when I go piss, I also have literally a habit of just like taking out my phone and going on Twitter. Even, even it's while, just, oh, you're it's sitting. Built in. Are you sitting while you're peeing? Standing. Oh, no, wow. no, standing. Okay, nice. Handless, one hand on Twitter. Dude, I used to have this um, <laughs> this coach. The guy died, actually, unfortunately. But he'd come into, like, our middle school bathroom and high school bathroom and, like, piss with the kids. Uh, I don't know if he was booting for anything, but he'd piss with the kids. And then he'd just put his hands up on the wall, like, in front of him and just, like, fucking TP <laughs> lean right on it and just no hands piss. He wasn't using no. the phone, but he was no hands no. pissing. Um, so I'm glad you're no. kind of honoring him in a way. So you could piss, you can piss in boots. You can't piss with kids. <laughs> um, that's crazy. Especially like that. So uh, anyway, <laughs> right, 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 right. TP. Uh, TP. So <laughs> I open up my, my DMs cause, uh, I saw I had notifications and it's a dopamine hit when you get a couple right, little notifications right. at the bottom. I had two DMs. So I was like, let me open them. Number one, Michael Dell. I'm like, this can't be good. Michael Dell sliding in my DMs once a quarter. Once a quarter. Was he got a reminder for this? He might. Dude, he's got a pipe. We're not talking. We're not talking. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're going to have to subscribe and go listen to every other episode of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> he's got yeah, a pipe. why is Henry? Um, I think we titled some episode like Michael Dell or he's on a 
60 billion. He's just million. always on a tear in my DMs about their stock price. But anyway, he Cause, DMs cause me. Because you, you, you slandered his name, basically. And by you, I mean the video that you just repurposed slandered his name, but I, it probably got right. A so what years. Orig- Yeah, what originally happened is I made a short called The Decline of Dell, oh. which was just a oh, remix dude, off neck. of this longer YouTube video oh. called The Decline of Dell. <laughs> Neg and Michael actually, Dell out into the woodworks or out of the woodworks. <laughs> you actually watch it. It's not. It's not. It's not that bad. Like it's just, it's really not that bad. It's a funny little well, animated apparently short. Apparently, it's crushing. So but anyway, he, <laughs> um, so he he DMs me, funny thing, dot dot dot. Go and look at how much Dell stock is up since you made your video that missed the real story but got lots of views. <laughs> dude, 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 that missed the You're real worth story. Many billions, <laughs> yeah, but got lots of views. Yeah. Dude, that's got to be like the epitome of old people just hating the internet. They're like, you can say whatever you want how, and just get millions of views. How is this still on his brain? <laughs> right. It, he, it was one throwaway short a year ago. He messaged me in May. Yeah. It was a year ago. <laughs> uh, actually, my next long was going to be the, and it still probably wow. will be, the, I, it probably will be now Dude. that he keeps doing yeah. this, the, like the story of Dell, the proper story. Dude, if you um, could get like... but. If if he could somehow agree to let you like come to him, that'd be a really funny like story. Like you go up to him and you're like, "We tried that." Well, yeah, yeah. Does he know you have hmm. almost two M's now? Two men subscribers. He knows I get a lot of views. He does know that. He, he knows I get a lot of views. And I missed the real story for the wrong story, though. That's unfortunate. So, you got the right story with a lot of views. Probably just like it. wouldn't talk to you though. Just weird. Um, yeah, um, I hope you make that after uh, now that Cobra's. Uh, oh, I just. <laughs> do you have a response? I just did a laugh. I just laughed at it. I laugh react. Oh, that's all I got. That's kind of sick. Um, yeah, just leave it at that. Just, just leave it at that. And <laughs> reacting then, at Michael Dell. Yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about it after. But that's. I don't know what that is in the morning. But it's cool that. Let's talk about our leave policy. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Well, we got a more global problem that um, really just started to bubble up to the surface this morning. Um, unfortunately, dude, it was bubbling and you were all alone because I slept in. I woke up. Uh, I, that might be part of the problem, too, <laughs> is um, I'm technically a part time <laughs> worker. But I, I was, dude, let me just say really quick. I got really down the rabbit hole. <laughs> this guy, Robert O'Neill, he was a. Uh, SEAL Team 6, dude, which is like the highest of high. Like, there's no more elite special force unit uh, in the U.S. military. So he was there. He was the one that shot Osama bin Laden uh, three times in the face, flew it to smithereens. And uh, it was just, he's a really good storyteller. And I just cranked through this four-hour podcast um, that I started at like (laughs) midnight Um, at 1x speed, too, because it was that good. I got some clips, too, I want to put up on Twitter. But that, that, let me just say one thing and how it connects. And it really doesn't, but I'm forcing it. One of the big mantras in the Navy SEALs is this, you are the problem. Like any problem out there, you got to take full responsibility. It's like this, uh, Jocko, uh, is like something ownership. Uh, basically, like take ownership for everything. Basically, any of the issues that we're about to talk about with Clipped is just like ultimately on us because we basically neglect the company and have for many years. And then like we, whenever we're like, oh, fuck, we've neglected it. There are problems. We try and swoop back in and then we just cause more problems because we're like fucking shaking everything and causing tantrums. But um, but really the, the crux and now I'm going to leave Robert O'Neill away. He's got some good dude. Let me let me get a good quick story here because i want to post a tweet about it i I was doing screen clippings too of this stuff but um well it's not even a good story if i tell it um yeah it is pop come on well basically uh like when they when they found osama bin laden like i don't know that there's one like higher up woman that had been tracking him for 20 years and it was just like her whole life like she didn't get married she didn't have kids she didn't do anything but just like hunt osama bin laden um When they finally found her, they wanted to keep it super secret until the last minute. So they were just training on stuff. And so everyone was like speculating, like, what could the target be? Um, This part of the story isn't good. 
Um, ugh, none of the. Uh, Come I'm on, I'm playing Pop. it out Finish in my it. head, Don't and I'm like, I'm not gonna do it justice, Don't. dude. No, present can tense. I, can I just cut present to the clip? Tense. Can we just put the, the clip's like a minute long? But basically, <laughs> like, <sighs> his storytelling's so Give good, I'm just to gonna me. butcher it. But it's basically like they're in the car speculating. It was like some of the top operatives, and they're like, "Hey guys, I think it's Osama bin Laden," because they thought it was Gaddafi originally. Because I guess he was around at the time. Like another Navy SEAL is like. Oh, yeah, I think it's Osama, too. And the guy driving the truck is like, if it's Osama bin Laden, I'm going to suck your dick. And then Robert's like, fast, fast forward three weeks, and I'm standing over Osama bin Laden's body. And I look over at him. And I'm like, well, now's as good of a time as any. And the guy's like, wow. No, he, you really you really brought that one together. Pop. No, I, you know, uh, round of applause. In my head, as I was saying his quote, I'm like, "Don't fuck up this quote." As I'm saying the quote, it gets really nerve wracking. Um, hey, I'll, I'll ruin. I'll ruin it. the other good part is the woman that had been tracking him for 20 years. She, uh, like in the movie uh, Zero Dark Thirty, they have her as like, I don't know. He brings the body bag with Osama, and they open it up, and she looks at it, and she starts like tearing up. He's like, "That's not what happened." What happened is we bring them, I open up the body bag or whatever, show it to uh, show it to her. And I'm like, is this your guy? And then she looks at him. And she's like, yep, I guess I'm out of a job. And then she turns around and leaves. <laughs> like that, wow. that was like the pinnacle. Wait, who was she? She's just she like was a CIA woman who'd been a local. No, she's like American, American high up official. Um, I don't know if her name's out and stuff like that, but um, it's just been like one woman that just fucking like she basically nailed everything. Like he was saying, like we went through the whole oh, dude, there's some good story. They went through the whole thing and like every single person in that building and like the the structure and everything she had just like nailed to a T like she didn't miss anything. And it was just like wow. 100 percent accurate. Osama bin Laden's son. So what happened was like she basically told them like, hey, uh, Osama's with his son. He's like 20 years old. You're probably going to encounter him because they like sleep near each other. Uh, he'll come out and he'll give you a threat. So basically what happened was exactly that. He like came out before Osama. Osama was in bed with his wife. And uh, he like, he's got a gun on the stairwell. And then one of the guys in the Navy SEALs, because uh, like normally you don't want to be in the stairwell because they'll like throw grenades down at you because he was on the third floor and they were all like beginning to go up the building. Um, mm. You want to stay away. But he had this idea. I don't know where it came from. No one did. But he basically said... Um, in like two languages that Arabic and something else that he might speak. Uh, he was like, he basically like tricked them because they, they couldn't tell if it was like Pakistani military. Like they wouldn't have known who was invading. So he's like, Oh, come down here for a second. I need you. And then he like peeked his head over the, the banister on the stairwell and they just fucking popped him, And uh, like, they just confused him. Wow. Like he, come he come like, down here for a second. I need you in two different languages that he might speak. Yeah, yeah. Just enough so he was like, wait, who is this? Wow. And he he peeked his head over wow. and popped him right there. And then uh yeah, I guess I guess when they went up to Osama, it was basically just like a crapshoot that it was this guy, because like everyone kind of fanned out and they're just all searching. And then like one dude that cleared the room, he comes in. Cause when you're clearing the room, it's the most dangerous job in the Navy SEALs, because like come in t and you don't know where yeah, people are going dude I, I i really like i bought like three different clear things. you clear that room <laughs> so he like cleared you the room clear that room and he just like there were, i guess there are more people there because he tackled two of them then robert o'neill comes and osama's behind his wife with like his hands on his her shoulders and he just fucking just doo, 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 three to the face explodes his whole head and uh at, did he hit the wife uh the wife i think she got some some stuff but it was overall like fine but it was dude he's just so a really hard. good storyteller so i was hooked i love navy seal stuff uh they're just so fucking hard one thing wow. one thing to, it was a business podcast dude my bad my bad i just <laughs> up till 4 a.m um and what was i gonna say oh it was basically like everyone idolizes navy seals but it's basically like our bad guys versus their bad guys. It's just like our bad guys have good hearts. That's sort of the thing. Like they're all kind of fucked up because they just love murdering people. And it's like all they do, like they go out on deployment and Navy SEALs are just like, especially during the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts or wars, they'd go out every single night and just murder. Like they were saying like, if we didn't kill 11 people a night, 
then it's like unsuccessful night. And it's it's like crazy. They just never wow. get injured, I guess, because they go at night and they have night vision and like you're kind of unfair advantage. But dude. No, it's because crazy. have you seen that meme? It's like when the hero gets shot at in a movie. Yeah, it's that. And there's just like bullets all around them. And then it's like when the villain gets shot at, it's just like one to the one to the yeah. heart. It's just like <laughs> Basically, the hero just somehow is invincible. That's dude. That's how it sounds. Um, like were there any U.S. casualties in the uh, Osama raid? No, dude. Everyone was good, which is crazy because they took out dogs, a bunch of people. They had two dogs. Um, <laughs> one of the stories was like when because they had to crash the helicopter. Um, they crashed it, and like there were two helicopters. So the other helicopter. Why did they have to crash the helicopter? When it was broken, right, or something? Well, one, it was like these experimental helicopters never used before because they're a stealth helicopter. Because basically Pakistan, dude, we're going to get into it. Pakistan, they... <laughs> Clear the room! <laughs> they they were basically like on the side of Al-Qaeda. Like they weren't really friendly to us. They were like protecting Al-Qaeda, more or less. So we couldn't tell Pakistan that we were coming in. So we had to be like super stealth. Never tested these things out Um so we like they came in and the compound had like big walls around it. So like there was just a crazy updraft and like they had to crash it because otherwise it would have been fucked either way. They just like crashed it in the right way. But the other helicopter didn't really know or it was like miscommunication. And so uh, I don't know. There was just this little story of this like one of the guys with the dogs that was going around the building like saw the crashed helicopter and he like reported on his comms. He's like, hey, guys, uh. They knew we were coming because they have an exact mock-up of our helicopter crashed in in the compound. Uh, and they're like, no, you fucking numbskull. That's ours. No, you fuck. <laughs> he's like, oh, you're right. My bad. <laughs> fucking mayday. Mayday. <laughs> but it, it's just like, damn, dude, these are like um, the pinnacle in there. Were these helicopters like silent or something? Yeah, it's like... The, I feel like this would cause quite the commotion. Uh, well, once you're in there, this was like... This isn't like a war town either. It's like a resort town or something. I forget the name of it. But... um. I mean, you don't really hear it till it's like over you. Um, oh, so they just couldn't get picked so up by radar. And stuff. Didn't they crash in like his yard? Yeah. Oh, he had a compound with walls and stuff. You're just saying it was like a big resort. So wherever they were making noise, well, beginning their raid, like you couldn't probably hear inside the house. Oh, well, I mean, you hear, but by the time you hear, there's on top of you and you're sleeping. Pop, pop. You know? um, yeah. But it's yeah. just like they came, they, they came in. And they had like all the intel on the doors, but we're gonna, dude, we're gonna get to the business. I swear. Um, one of the doors. I don't know. We might not. We might not. Um, come on. So come they on, go to on, like blow on. up the doors. They had this big <laughs> charge, and when they go to blow it in, uh, it was like a fake door. So it's just like they explode it, and there's just a giant brick wall behind the door, and they all got pissed. They're oh, like, "What the fuck wow. do we do?" But Robert O'Neill, uh, he was stoked. Because they were all pissed, like, fuck, there's a fake door. How do we get in? But he's excited because now he realized, like, oh, this is definitely Osama's compound because no one would, in their right mind, put a fake door. Um, so then they, they, like, let him in through the garage or something. And, it, and then he went in. And, dude, it's just, like... Yeah, it's, like, in those... Uh, it's, like, in those... It's, like, in the haunted houses when you have a, a stairway that goes... <laughs> just runs into the ceiling. Dude, that's what they had. It's, like, only the ghosts would do that. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of, lot of good wow. stories there. Um I wish I could have told him, but so, uh, but no, you know why that's good? You know why this is all good? Really, kind of like Elon going to Mars puts all of our little dude. weak shit into perspective because we're talking about having unlimited leave at our fun little company. Dude, talk about unlimited leave. Who cares? Like, they had a whole you, you watch Lone Survivor ever? No, sir. really? You haven't watched Lone Survivor? Is that a TV show? A Is it a movie? Uh, Dude, that's no. literally the best war movie. No. It's like the most realistic Navy SEAL. Basically, like they had one dude survived. I read the book and cried in Chicago. I remember because uh, it's it's like crazy. But they went no. to rescue him and like one of their helicopters with like 20 Navy SEALs uh, got shot by an RPG and everyone died in the helicopter to rescue this one guy. Wow. And uh it's just like, wow, we, wow. Could, we could really, you know, live that life and just out of nowhere, our entire squad just gets killed. You think you could be a Navy SEAL? No. After watching all this Navy SEAL content? I couldn't. Dude, they're so hard because I'm so soft. Yeah. But like. Soft and fluffy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that was me. Radical ownership, dude. Um, whatever <laughs> the fuck it's called. 
basically extreme. I could ownership. land a plane though. I'm pretty sure with my extreme ownership, I could land yeah. a plane. Um, um, anywho, so dude. back to the business. Okay, so I was sleeping in. You were right. you were radicalizing. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where we had that 15 minute tangent. <laughs> um, um, well, what what's basically happened? Let me keep talking, dude. Um, I'll pass off the conch shell. But go for it. No, go basically, for it. like two years ago, um, a little over two years ago. We had realized that we had some issues with Clipped, their company. I think it was Smart Nonsense Media even back in the day. I don't even remember. But um, yes, it was going from agency to managed marketplace. Smart Nonsense Media to Clipped. Yeah. And I think at the time, we were like trying to figure out what our offer is. Um, we had this thing like 10 for 10, which is like, we're going to make 10 animated clips for you. It's going to cost 10 grand a month. And we sold them, but they didn't work. And I'm like, what the fuck do we do? Pure agency play. Yeah. We we then realized, like, what if we just match people together? It's like, hey, you're an editor and you're someone that wants an editor. Bam. You guys just hang out. But we... we well, yeah, just wait. So the, the, the reason there, which I think is interesting, is we were like, why as an agency are we spending all of our waking hours working on other people's stuff mm -hmm. that, like, they're treating us like crap. They're treating our creatives like crap. They're killing us. Like, what's at the other end of that business model? Well, it would be marketplace where we have no uh, onus. We have no, we don't actually control the output of what they're getting. We're just, uh, a success for us on the marketplace model is we place you with a great editor. We don't care what you work on. We also had a lot of complexity uh, in that we had like, team captains who would oversee like six different editors working on different projects. And there were graphic artists that would like supposedly help out with the edits. And like, this was all for content that just didn't work. So we had this like super interdependent structure that was just silly. So we tried to pivot away from that. And I think one of the issues was like keeping, we didn't want to like keep everyone on payroll for some reason. Um, Basically, we just wanted to like have people be aligned with their incentives. So it's like, hey, if you have a client, we're going to pay you and we're going to pay you even more than you're paid right now just because like there's some risk if, if they leave. Um, and that basically caused an uproar because it was going from like a company where you have like job security and you're just like you're not paid. You're paid a lot, but like you, know, you could be paid more, but like that's fine um, with a good culture of like unlimited leaves. It was just different than what it was just different than what our like first 20 teammates signed up. Right, for. right which was agency, you're salaried, you get, you know, P you get all these things. And now we're like, hey, we're going to be a marketplace. And uh, you're kind of responsible for your own destiny on the marketplace right. now. Which, yeah, it wasn't what they signed up for. So, and I was kind of radical in how I uh, pitched this because I was in theory, like the head <laughs> person at the time. So I, I just got ousted because uh, we just didn't know how to do anything. Yeah. Like we didn't know how to put things in front of people, how to make fast decisions. It was also how like, to... it's tricky with a remote company where like, and async. So it's, that's all, always made everything difficult because it's like, they've never met us in person too. So there's just a lot of trust issues. Needless to say, I stepped down and we like, don't really change much of the business, at least in the direction that we really, really wanted to. But we did just like match people and that's our business model. Um, but we still had everyone on payroll and limited leaves, et cetera. Now, fast forward two years later. It was like, yeah, it was like a compromise. It was like halfway between agency and where we wanted to go. Right. Which was like a decent medium. And we ground, basically... Middle ground. Oh, oh, you go. You go. Dude. Sorry. You go. No, no, I, I was just... Uh, I accidentally came up with middle ground. And oh, an it didn't even trigger me, but now so, I did. Um, yeah. 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 All right. Inside Maybe this weekend. The podcast, but, dude. Um, anywho... So, so yeah, we've ever since that point, we've basically just stagnated as a company, largely because like we found content that worked, um, and then like neglected the company more or less. And then it's just like roughly been in the same spot. We had a good, we still had a good year. We did 1.2 million our first year. We did 1.5 million our second year. Yeah. So we grew 30%. Well, negative profit. Probably. But, um, right. So like one of those things problem. where you talk but, about the the bottom line if you're doing well you talk about the top line if you're not doing well but 
Well, yeah, yeah our, bottom our content really messy. fucks stuff. But basically, we neglected the business, and then we're starting to come back to it. Like the last six months, we kind of talked about it in the last pod. Was like coming back to the business, getting all like our our ducks in a row, so that when Jack comes in, Henry's brother, he can like run it well how it should be run. But what's kind of happened, and what we're realizing is like all this neglect has meant like the the company. I don't know if it's like it's not like God, shit just slips. Yeah. Sh- a lot it's of just cracks, like dude. one person does one thing that leads to another. Then people see that. So they the culture just kind of... There is no culture because there's no one really oozes. running the ship. Um, I've been yeah. fucking AWOL for way too long trying to figure out like what is the business model. And really like the crazy thing about the business model is like the thing we, we realized two years ago, which is like, hey, we're going to match you with an editor and we're going to pay the editor as long as you're subscribed to Clipped. We realize like that is the business model. Like we just got to do that. Great it's model. Fucking great. It's like <laughs> it's a great model. It's it works. In the it's game been everywhere. working this whole time. We just tried to force it on people that didn't sign up for that. That was the main issue. And we like threw out everything. And now that's why I went like trying to test out Headhunter. We went trying to test out Headhunter and like just a lot of dumb stuff to all circle back to this point. Now we realize we're in kind of the same predicament of like we realize this is the good model. This is like the sustainable one. But our current team isn't really on board with that model and is probably going to like hate it even more now because this thing, like, for example, with unlimited leaves, it's like very taking advantage of not taking advantage of, but like people are capitalizing on it because you can take as much time off as you want. And we're going to like find a yeah. sub. To OK, so they, yeah, to get back to my Friday morning, that was not a good Friday was I basically had a report pulled for, I was just curious, like we say, and this actually comes from the guys at 37 Signals. They're like, hey, all these tech companies that are like unlimited leaves, do you actually mean unlimited leaves? Because if you mean two weeks off, three weeks off, just give people three weeks off. Because now like we're upset people are taking more leave than they should. And people that aren't taking enough leave feel this stress of like, should, should I be taking more leave because it's unlimited and like the leadership team doesn't take much leave. So it's like, just say what you mean. And so we wanted to pull basically uh, the leaves people have taken for the last six months or so. And what I realized is like, wow, there are like some uh, some teammates that uh, take off a, a week a month. These are people taking off 12 weeks a year. like Three, three months a year. W- where do you get to do that? Right. My brother who's worked at Goldman Sachs for eight years gets five weeks off a year. And like that's high, that's high. Yeah, uh, he's you know some VP at what wherever, but like two weeks is the standard PTO. Yeah, and we've got people now just through this oozing, taking off like twelve weeks a year, twenty five percent of the year, or working four day work weeks. Yeah, that's the tricky part of like basically having like business. Uh, this is just like so many balls that we're juggling, and like we kind of got to be spread thin. Then because I'll like go out and try and figure out a new business model. Meanwhile, like you got to create shorts, create long form, create a newsletter, also run the company. And like, like it's just, and I wasn't actually getting, I wasn't relying on or getting any help from right. our leadership team well, in the company because I wasn't syncing with them. Cause we're all async. Right. Right. And yeah, so there's zero help because we just don't know how to delegate a thing that like we don't know what the model is, so we don't really want to delegate it yet. And then like so, there's people in our leadership team who like don't really have a job because of that because we haven't like told them, hey, what is your role? Because we don't know what their role should be. So then their role becomes like helping people take more time off. It's like, well, now all the incentives are fucked. Um, and like, who knows? Basically, like it came to a head this morning and we're like, OK, we got to figure out how to like reset all the expectations here um and it's also a huge problem with our clients this whole just yeah it's just it's just a mess it's it's a classic like what gets measured gets managed it's like just when you're not looking stuff just right um so so the good the good news is like all of these things are i think coming to a head and we're fixing them and systematizing them And my brother's going to come in. And uh, what doesn't help, too, I'll just throw this out there, is like back in the day, uh our original team, when we built it, it was based around animators because that was the thing we were really good at. 
and we realized like, hey, and we did realize this two years ago. It's like people really just want video editors for the most part. Like animators are like pretty niche. And it's just like not who our market is. We've known this a long so time. So we've just been fitting like square pegs into round holes and trying to jam it in this whole time. And uh, it's just like. Congratulations on getting that one out. Pop. I did. I was like, what's the shape? Square is pegs into round, round holes in a fucking. Um, <laughs> got the shapes right. So happy Friday, dude. Uh, um, just, just for everybody out there that's, uh, thinking about starting a company, just like, there's always something, dude, except, except yep. if we get out, I don't guard a Lumi yet, except if we get out now we have Jack focus on the business, us focus on content. And like, we don't really have to deviate from that. So like, we should be able to run the company. How it should oh, be. Yeah. I think, uh, I still think our biggest weakness is this like founder mentality of wearing all the hats not being good at asking for help not being good at delegating things well especially when it's um i think the like async remote thing is really hard because i was just listening to or we were listening to my first million and like sean was talking about mr beast how he takes someone that wants to be on his leadership team basically and he he just lives with them so they just absorb everything it's really hard to do that if they're in a 12-hour time yeah zone difference across the world Right. One of the biggest things we're dealing with is our team doesn't have all of the context for how we make decisions. Right. So they're they're often operating under different different contexts. It's all yeah. It's all. Oh, it's all. It's, it's all. all. So we're gonna figure that out. At least we're not bankrupt. Gardaloo! Gardaloo! 